Uh, one of the Old Testament scholars that's been most helpful to me is uh, Walter Brueggemann. We've we've probably talked about him before. And he he actually surprises me that I mean that you say because uh, I've got some of his stuff, but maybe from his earlier works, uh, some stuff yeah. on the prophets that I've got of his. But you know, yeah. uh, he he has a he has, his view is I guess his view of scripture. Now you've challenged me because now I got to go back and reread. But his view <laughs> of scripture to me was always less than what I what I thought it should be. But that was me. Right. So well, he's he's not coming from evangelicalism. He's not no. coming from Pentecostalism. <laughs> yeah. He's he's one of those out outside uh, di dialogue partners. Kind of like what Harvey Cox is to the <laughs> study of Pentecostalism. You know, he is um, one of those outside dialogue partners that's been very helpful to uh, to Pentecostals. And, and he's engaged with us, and we've engaged with him. You know, we first started, you know, at the seminary. You know, we had students that would graduate from the seminary, and they were wanting to do the next degree. And so, we, we started sending them to do THM degrees with uh, Walter Bru under Walter Brueggemann uh -huh. uh, at Columbia, and of course they were interested in that because we used some of his work, you know, in, in our in our classes and what whatnot. But uh, like for instance, he's got this marvelous. He wrote this about 30 years ago, called the Message of the Psalms, and it is one of the best books on Psalms that I have ever read. I've never, I don't have that at all. Right. I, that's that's interesting. He, uh, uh, I was reading it uh, soon after it was published, and I'm talking 30 years ago, and I, I stumbled into. Uh, I was reading a footnote in the back, and it was. Uh, some little article that I had published, so it mean, really shocked me. That was really before I got to know him. But we actually got to know him because he got to know our students. Uh -huh. And so, you know, he started started realizing that there was this place in Cleveland, Tennessee, you know, and so that uh, ended up leading uh, uh, kind of through our students. We visited him in, um, at Columbia there near Atlanta. and. Uh, Eventually, we even invited him to the seminary uh, on two different occasions to participate. Well, one was a, uh, uh, an annual meeting of the Society for Pentecostal Studies that uh -huh. we hosted, and he was a speaker, and we responded to his magnum opus, uh, which is his Theology of the Old Testament, volume right here. Testimony, dispute, advocacy. And of course, testimony, you know, we Pentecostals were doing testimony before testimony was cool. Yeah. So uh, he didn't even realize that, you know, as he was developing that aspect of Old Testament faith, that we have this rich tradition of testimony that, that connects with all of that. But anyway, we have great, we've had great dialogues. You know, he, he's not one of us, but he's, he's a friend, yeah. you know, and... And he really affirms what we're doing, and uh, and it's kind of interesting. So, uh, what he does in this book, he um, he lays out a paradigm for reading the Psalms, and it's real simple: Psalms of orientation, Psalms of disorientation, and Psalms of reorientation. Uh -huh. And of course, the main point is that we haven't paid enough attention to the disorientation in the Psalms. You know, over half the material of Psalms is lament and uh, complaint and, you know, grieve and grievance, uh -huh. even grieva grievance against God. But we filter all that out because in our spiritual use of Psalms, we, we filter it, uh -huh. you know, we filter it with our Christian faith. Uh, we well, filter we've out we've all that every, negative, negative. We've turned everything into. I mean, right. I mean, we've turned it in. We've turned most of Psalms into just kind of syrupy things that are right. really. Well, and, and exactly, we, we, we pick out the happy songs and we use those and we read those and we embrace those. Um, and sometimes even when there's a, a, a praise portion and a lament portion, we'll, yeah. we'll, we won't do the lament, we'll do the praise part. Uh -huh. And But that, that goes along with my earlier point yeah. that we have this high view of Scripture, but it's not a deep view of Scripture. It yeah. doesn't even incorporate a lot of the parts of Scripture that really probe the depths. You know, it's, the I'm just curious, you know, it's, it's interesting because the New Testament... The single most quoted, quoted or referred to psalm is what is it? Psalm, is it psalm one ten one? My Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies put place your enemies under your feet. Right. And and we we you're right. I, I don't you know we very uh, well. That's a happy psalm. So I mean I'm right. kind of going a little bit contra, but but we we hardly ever hear anything about 
the psalms outside of just a couple of them, like you said. It's, right. and, yet, and yet, well, the, we have a lot of songs and worship courses now right. that incorporate lots of lyric, yeah. you know, from the, the phrases of song, which makes but, sense because they were songs, right? But we, <laughs> but we don't do a lot with the lament, and, yeah. and we haven't, you know, as a Christian people since maybe the Negro spirituals. Uh -huh. they, they did it <laughs> because they were living it, and they found the richness of all of that. Why, why do you think that is? I'm just curious. Why do you think that is? That we're did um, does 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 Bergman talk about how? Uh, or, or the others talk about why we don't touch the Psalms and, and the lament. Or area. lament because we don't do it in our lives. We, we deny it. We cover it up. We make it a secret that we don't tell anybody except our therapist. We, we no longer, you know, I think one of the one of the dimensions of Pentecostal spirituality in its early days was we had an altar service. Other churches didn't have altar services. We had, that was one of the innovations. That was one of the distinctives of what we offer. We had altar services where people would come and pour out everything. Um, we would, you know, struggle together and strive together and pour it out together. We were a lamenting church as well as a praising church. Uh -huh. But somewhere along the way, you know, that went out of fashion. We got more respectable. I, you know, I think I think some of that is sociological. You know, it's like that's messy. You know, that's that's undignified. You know, and so anyway, we we lose that whole thing. We 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 push it. We marginalize it uh, into you know private. Uh, personal life and even not even spiritual life anymore it's it's therapy you know it's uh -huh. things we'll tell a counselor but we don't have anybody in the body of Christ that we'll talk to well I'm curious so, I'm curious about this because this this would come um, this would come more from the reformed area um, the reformed place a big emphasis upon sin the sinfulness of the individual right I'm talking about I'm not talking about the new the new strains that, that but right. but they I mean, even, they even the, have a place even in they, the liturgies. Yes, they they do. They, the, the it's like I'm a worm. I'm a I'm a sinner. I'm a and actually right. I think they go too far because I'm like on Sunday. I I kind of like the Orthodox. The Orthodox come confess their sins on Saturday and then on yeah. Sunday they're celebrating. You know. Right. But 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 um, but well, is it, is it because uh, did, did part the of that's our holiness or, tradition? Yeah. Did, it's did the it, idea that you know we got we got sanctified, so that becomes a past tense thing. You know, we're, we're not nearly as keen on, you know, the ongoing sanctifying work of God as we are on, um, you know, and that's another thing that Chris Green talks about is, is the problems in our, you know, he's a Pentecostal. He's yeah. writing to Pentecostals, but he talks a lot about, you know, I, and I loved it too because he, he addressed that whole, that whole holiness tradition. Yeah. You know, the, the good of it and then the not so good of it. Yeah. And the fact that it needs to be radically, uh, you know, deepened and, and and revisioned what what holiness is. I got to I need to make sure I get that book. Right, you love it. And uh, by the way, we you, talked about I was, that. I went to buy your book, and your book is like three hundred dollars, even on. Uh, oh, eBay. I was like, <laughs> uh, like where? <laughs> that's I saw that. I, oh, you know, like there there even <laughs> even on the screen there were these other options, yeah. but. By the way, not that you're not worth three hundred dollars, but I was like, "Ooh, three hundred dollars!" Like that. But I, I'm that's not, ridiculous. I don't even know where that, that comes from. Uh, but right beside it, I mean, you can find other uh, options for, for my, <laughs> my good reasonable price. But um, yeah, I, I couldn't figure that one out. That's ridiculous. Uh, it makes me blush, but um, I'm, I'm not getting any royalties. I can assure you, uh, I haven't gotten royalties on, on any of my stuff in years.